what up? It's your boy t Here on Reaction. Today's from Friday. I had uh, some other trailers up for as well, too, because, you know, today was the comic, the comic convention. I'm going to push them off to possibly either afterwards or just doing, doing tomorrow. Who knows? Either way, wait to wait two more trailers from the Comic Con because I got the main ones and one that got the way it was the more common one trailer and the recently comic trailer, trailer. I heard it's supposed to be a third trailer come out. If that comes out anytime, I'm going to react to it right away, either at SmackDown or whatever. But anyway, well, possibly because I'm watching, because I'm probably going to be double watching with, uh, watching, um, Death's, Death's Word Dishonor or Ring Honor pay view or I might just, uh, uh four or three, the results. But other than that, we're, we are, this is Strange Three Weeks, Stranger Things week, and we're capping off Strange Fear for a while till he released a Strange Fear, Stranger Three, Stranger. Blah, blah, blah. I'm so excited about the trailers. I can't talk right now. Stranger Things season four, uh, kill count reaction. But for now, we're finished up the Stranger Three, Stranger Things season three. God damn it, get it, get it. I'm too excited for the, the trailers right now. But anyway. We get to season three, uh, kill counts out the way as well too. We all do the rest of it, and you know he did this one all in once and in parts. So without further ado, pretty much this is part two of Stranger Things three. Let's get it. No intro, just straight to the kill counts. Yar, and he grabs her by the throat to show that he means Billy business. Mm -hmm. Mike rescues Eleven from a strangly death, allowing her to gain the upper hand once more. She mind flings Billy through a frickin' brick wall, which causes her to collapse and allows Billy to get away. He finds comfort in the hands of the possessed Heather Holloway and all their friends, the flayed citizens of Hawkins. The elevator full Here of twins, go. teens, and screams drops until it crashes. Oh, Erica, your mom and dad are gonna be so mad at you. Your mom's not gonna be able to find us if we're dead in a Russian elevator. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that, that would suck too. At the bottom of the shaft, a pair of Russians arrive on an Austin Powers cart. The scooper poopers hide while the Russians offload boxes, and after they're gone, sneak out using the canister of mystery liquid. Oh, okay, it was xenomorph blood. Mm. Melte. They start walking down a seemingly endless tunnel that was a digital effect made by the company Rise VFX. Wow. At the end of it, they reach a junction and witness a gathering of Russian mans and womans. Not only soldiers, but what, also cosmonauts? Also, how do they not get seen? Come on! I love these characters, but I don't love this plot line. It's too James Bond Jr. for me. <laughs> Especially when they stumble upon the evil Russian science laser beam. You could put that shit in Die Another Day and not a person would bat an eye. <laughs> At the Hess farm, Hopper and Joyce scope the place looking for some cups to steal. Score! After some cop flashlight holding and some hop heavy breathing, They hear something coming from below. It's Alexei, the promoted Russian scientist from the opening scene. He's got a Russian buddy with him, and don't look now, but this communist party about to get bigger. Grigori comes downstairs and finds his comrades all tied up on account of Jim Hopper, who gives him a real American hello. The two get into a scuffle mm. with many a bullet and fist flying. Hopper's able to cuff Alexei to his wrists, and the two of them and Joyce get away, while Grigori rat-a-tat tats in their way. <laughs> Maybe just a few more bullets will get him, Greggy. No? Okay. I'm sure you'll have better luck with John Connor. Between the bullets oh. and, oh yeah, a friggin' bomb, their car is rendered useless, forcing them to traverse the woods on foot. Joyce tries to have her own Reykjavik summit with Alexei, but Hopper is pretty much fed up with the both of them. And with his goddamn forest. It keeps disappearing on him. What the fuck? I love that transition into Eleven's void vision. It's a slick effect done once again wow. by Rise VFX. Grigori continues to track his oh, prey, who are currently okay. stopping by a 7-Eleven. That's the best place to get Coca-Cola and steal a rich guy's car. Sorry, Todd Father, it's for a good cause! Todd Hopper and Joyce take their Russian captive to the only person Hopper knows who can speak Russian, Murray Bauman, the ex-journalist who we met in season two. Hi, Jim. He brings him inside and sweeps down Alexei, showing his paranoia is still going strong. He's also just as surly and horny as usual, suggesting Hopper and Joyce want to bang. Careful now, Merster. That little lady's a firecracker. So if you don't mind, 
put that thing away, stop behaving like a jackass, and ask him what he's doing that's making my magnets fall off my damn bridge! Winona Ryder continues to have the time of her life with this role. Since Eleven saw that Hopper and Joyce are currently indisposed, it's gonna be up to the party and this box of Cocoa Puffs to do something wow, about Billy. Cool. They're joined by Nancy and Jonathan as well, and together they realize there are a bunch of Flayed Hawkinsians. Mrs. Driscoll, Heather Holloway, mm. and Heather's dad. Tom. Yeah, that guy. They take the Wheeler Station Wagon Shit. to the Holloway home, where inside they find evidence that the family has switched to an under-the-sink diet. They realize the Holloway parents must have been abducted by Billy and Heather, and to figure out where Flaying Home Base is, they decide to check with Mrs. Driscoll at the hospital. Nancy and Jonathan reconcile after he apologizes for not believing her. Yeah, dude, she was right all along, which is why Mrs. Driscoll is all of a sudden missing, and why Tom Holloway is here looking super extra sweaty. Uh, panic face! Which on <laughs> set was sometimes sugar glass, sometimes rubber, for the many times they had to film the strike. The guy was like, you really got it. I know, really. He said if you hit him harder, it's gonna hurt less. They're not in the clear since a possessed Busey is here, but oh before Lord. he can carve any numbers into their heads, they begin a flashy hospital chase scene. During mm -hmm. it, we see the bodies of three Ooh. hospital staff members and or patients on the ground. Oh, hey, yeah, this is a kill count, isn't it? Bruce finds them and starts battering them around, and again, hard for me to tell how much of the original person is present here. You who? Nancy Drew, where are you? As Bruce chases after Nancy, Jonathan is cornered by the possessed Tom Holloway, making Tom the second middle-aged man to beat the shit out of this teenager mm. in the past few minutes. Nancy fights back, with the damage affecting both Bruce and Tom, and they're killed in turn by Nancy Ooh. and Jonathan. She breaks Bruce's face with a fire extinguisher, Ooh. and he stabs Tom Holloway in the chest. Mike and Eleven make amends over M&Ms, but the good times are cut short by a light show, courtesy of the decomposing flayed bodies. What was once Bruce and Tom melt into meat blobs and join forces combining their strength and becoming the next stage in gloopy evolution. Oh, the Lord. gloop monster chases Nancy through a part of the hospital that's under construction or something. Since when did that become a mainstay location in horror media? Watch right. it now, Nance. Me gon' gloop ya! Man, all this gloopin' looks pretty gloop darn good. It sucks that it's obfuscated by the annoying flashing lights. The hospital monster continues the webbing, dripping, mm. gross saliva look, as well as the careful consideration that went into how it actually functions. From the bulky gorilla arm, to the millipede legs and the spider-like claws, each limb was rigged in its own way. Hilariously, wow. this monster was played on set by stuntman Ken Barfield, whose okay. outfit looks like a bargain bin cosplay of Peacemaker. Hey, <laughs> calm down, Ken. Right before the monster can glue. Fun, uh, like I said, fun irony of me uh, watching stuff today because you know I, I saw the comic reveal trailer for uh, more combat. And he mentioned Peacemaker, and if you saw it, you get the hint. Loopify Nancy, Eleven breaks in and force blasts that gloopy boy straight mm. out the window. They're unable to stop it from going to visit its chud friends, though. And before you can say how Ratma, that thing has crept through the sewers all the way back to Billy and Heather. It's time. Time for what? Oh, time for a patriotic carnival, mofos! Brought to you by the mm. Dread Pirate Roberts. Oh, and look at how he's dressed. I think this event will be a mix of pleasure and business! Unfortunately go. for Klein, his business partner could make his face look worse than it already does. You're lucky you still breathe. Fully lucky. <laughs> Gregory tells Klein he has one day to find Hopper. As the Gravitron spins, Klein says, As you wish! <laughs> Alexi is enjoying the American comforts of cartoons and fast food, as Hopper and Joyce try to get answers from him through translator Murray Sweaty Balls Bauman. That's not confirmed or anything. Dude just looks like he'd have sweaty balls. <laughs> Alexi is difficult at first, but eventually, Hopper motivates him to Ooh. spill the beans and some schematics. Everybody smoke on three! Three! Through Murray, <laughs> Alexi tells them the Russians are trying to open a doorway. A doorway between worlds. Since Hawkins had already opened that door once before, it's the least jammed entrance, so they came here to pry it open again. Mm. Should have padlocked that shit, Hawkins Lab. Hopper calls the Hawkins Lab guys to relay all this to Dr. Sam Owens. You know, Paul Reiser from season two. The guy who ended up not being as shitty as you'd expect Paul Reiser to be. Hop's told it's gonna take some time to get them help, but Joyce ain't in the mood to sit. She's worried her kids are in danger at the carnival, so she takes Murray and the Alexis to head back to town. 
The Russians finally wise up that there are meddling kids in their midst, although I've gotta say, it takes them way too long to get a hold of right. them. They should have gotten a little Genghis Khan on them. Ooh. Erica and Dustin escape through a floor grate as the ice cream slingers get a bouquet of guns in their faces. In the air ducts, Dustin recaps seasons one and two for Erica until they find their way to the Dino DNA freezer system. They don't have any fake Barbasol cans, but they do find the keys to a cart and a freaking cattle prod or some shit. That looks pretty fun. Dustin's hoping they can use these to help Steve, who's currently getting interrogated the hard way. Who do you work for? For the millionth time I work at Scoops Ahoy! He's tied to a chair with Robin, and we get a lovely scene between these two fan-favorite characters. Their chemistry is great, even when their plan of escape lands them sideways on the ground. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Don't cry, Robin. <laughs> The two of them talk about their time together in high school. Robin's a geeky band kid and was completely ignored by Steve since he was way too cool and popular. It didn't matter that you were an ass. I was still obsessed with you. Even though all of us losers pretend to be above it all, we still just want to be popular. Their discussion of high school social dynamics uses a music cue from Day of the Dead, the same movie shown at the movie theater earlier in the season. But I guess you gotta mess up to figure things out, right? I hope so. I love that score by John Harrison, and it's great to hear this cue in another character-driven scene. I'm sorry I said those things about- Music, wow. I'm sorry too. Really? Wow. Well, what do you know? We are heroes after all. What a relief. The Russians return with an evil doctor who injects them with some kind of truth serum. Mmm, truth. A side effect of the serum is that it gets them teens giggly, giving us more delightful interactions that always make me laugh aloud. I talk so good. <laughs> <laughs> Want to know a secret? What? I like it too. Lord. <laughs> Honestly, the Russian plotline might be worth it for this scene alone. Who do you work for? The scoops. <laughs> scoops on my. More physical coercion is threatened, but Dustin and Erica Ow. intervene. They cause a melty distraction with the green goo, then use the cattle prod to give this doctor a drink the of medicine. Oh, they're the scoop troop, and they'll always stick together. Eleven takes a void venture, looking for the Holloways, but the tissue toll it's taking on her has Mike all kinds of upset. Can we please just come up with a new plan because I love her and I can't lose her again? Aw, he L words L. She didn't hear his proclamation, cause she was too busy finding Billy Gloomus. Turns out, he's just sitting in his room, minding his own goddamn business. Nothing weird about this. I think it's what people did to pass the time before the internet. The party and co realizes this is probably a trap, so they ain't about to march into Billy's bedroom. Eleven remembers how she saw into her mom's memories last season, so she decides to try the same trick with Killy Billy. In the void, she Killy takes Billy. his hand and reaches out to the Billy deep inside. That lands her in his memories on a stranded beach beach with nary a Jeff Probst in sight. Instead, oh. she sees a young Billy and his mother. Careful out there, kid. Don't want to end up like the Kittner boy. This memory has got a lightning storm going on, giving us very cool visuals, the kind that have come to define the series. Again, they were done by rodeo effects. My favorite part is how they kick this kid around on a green screen even though you barely see him in the end. The upside down dandruff starts raining down as Eleven sees little boy Billy get bad news berated by his father. Yeah, that guy has always sucked. Ben and he even beers. abused Billy's mom in front oh. It's another example of the cycle of abuse that was hinted at last season, giving us an explanation of Billy's bastardom that led to his eventual mind flaying. The stormy trip down memory lane shows Eleven where Mind Flayer HQ is, the old steel mill. Good work, Al. They've got a location. Pull out! But that's not an effective method of void control, and she finds herself still voiding in Hopper's cabin alone. Mm. The Mind Flayer's trap worked after all, and now he knows exactly where she is. Now we can all see you. She pushes him away and gets back to reality for a nice little mic hug, but the dominoes have fallen. All the sweaty, sallow Hawkins town folk who have been possessed by the Mind Flayer are done with the fireworks and barbecue. It's time to work some steel. By which I mean approach the gloop monster and collapse into piles Ooh. of gloopy, gloopy meat. Here's the big count I've been dreading all season as the Mind Flayer collects his debts. Editor Josh counted his keister off and came up with 27 people in this group shot, which is the same count he got in a group 
group shot at the end of episode 4. These deaths include Heather Holloway, her unnamed mother, and Mrs. Driscoll. Just a heads up, a newspaper later includes these deaths in its figures, but by Josh's count, that headline should say 31. It'd be these 27, plus Tom and Bruce, then one death and one death yet to happen. With the gloop monster on its way, the kids board up Hopper's cabin like this were Night of the Living Dead. Maybe they watched it ahead of seeing Dave. Despite their best efforts, their fortification gets bested by an inside-out mm. deep-rising tentacle. It gets axed and shot at before ultimately falling victim to Eleven's powers. Mm -hmm. Be gone with ye! Tentacles 2 and 3 also get torn up like a couple of grabbers getting Burt Gummer, Ooh. but then Big Papa Gloop Boy breaks through the ceiling to go. our- Come here! Timor rescues her and she splits it apart with her powers, Ooh. giving them a chance to get the fuck out of there. Family truckster, away! They break into a store to patch Eleven up, and while Lucas stocks up on fire works, Mike nearly, but doesn't actually, admit to Eleven that he loves her. The Ice Cream Sailor Gang races through the tunnel back towards the elevator. They get there and ascend, though Steve and Robin can't get too much higher. They're tripping more than a suburban kid at Burning Man. Are you gonna die on us? We all die, my strange little child friend. It's just a matter of how and when. More bad guys with guns chase them back into the mall, where Dustin sneaks them into a theater showing Back to the Future. Wow. He sits Steve and Robin down to enjoy the time traveling and incest, then heads back to the projector booth and walkie-talkies Mike. The larger group finally knows where Dustin's been all season, so they head to the mall with a jackass cart full of fireworks. Mm -hmm. Hope those aren't for Steve-O's butt. Dustin returns to the <laughs> theater to find that the drugged-up babysitters have been erased from existence. And if my calculations are correct, when these drugs hit 88 milligrams per dose, they're gonna see some serious shit. The psychedelia eventually sends them retching into toilets side by side. These two are on their come down, a sacred part of any drug trip, and they start interrogating each other to see if they're still getting truth serumed. Steve admits he used to be in love with Nancy Wheeler, but he's not anymore. He's found someone better. First of all, she's hilarious. She's so funny. I feel like this summer I have laughed harder than I have laughed in a really long wow. time. And she's smart, way smarter than me. You know, she can crack, like, top-secret Russian codes. And... Aw, shit, man. Here it comes. We've been waiting this whole season for these two to kith and create the ultimate power couple of hilarious fan favorites. Only one problem. When Robin said she was obsessed with Steve in school, it wasn't because she was into him. It's because she was into a fellow female classmate, a wannabe singer named Tammy Thompson. I wanted her to look at me. Jesus, she's but no. she couldn't pull her eyes away from you and your stupid... Stupid hair. Robin's the first openly gay character mm. in the series, and she's hesitant to admit this to Steve because she thinks he won't like her anymore. Makes sense in the 80s, a much more homophobic decade, with an administration that was vocally anti-gay. Steve realizes what Robin is saying, and his reaction only secures him as a heartwarming hunk with good hair. Just thinking. Okay. I mean, yeah. Tammy Thompson, you know, she's cute and all, but... I mean, she's a total dud. She's not. Yes, she is. She wants to be like a singer. She wants to move like Nashville and shit. Their friendship is solidified as Dustin and Erica find them. They try to sneak out with the exiting theater patrons, but this Soviet blocks that exit and sends them sliding away. Hopper and Joyce's incessant arguing finally gets to be too much for Murray. He tells them to STFU and F already. Cut the horse shit and get to the part where you admit your sexual feelings for one another. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Oh, is it a yo? <laughs> it stuns the buyer's babe and the big hopper, but it amuses Alexi and brings him and Murray closer together. Do I sense some detente? The sexually frustrated twosome get to the carnival so Joyce can find her kids and keep them safe. Larry Klein spots the hop and uses his Zach Morris phone to alert his commie confidants. Murray and Alexi are hanging out at the car per hopper's orders, but when Alexi expresses a desire to experience America, Murray takes it upon himself to show him around the carnival. You know, rigged game games, crappy prizes, a serial killer on stilts. America! I love seeing Alexi so happy here, just basking in all this freedom. What is this? Some sort of rap? I guess it's based off of his, uh, one of his, uh, earlier kill counts with, I think it was Uncle Sam, something like that. Ed Friend Redemption? The night is about to be made perfect with hot dogs and a Woody the Woodpecker plush. <laughs> 
death when the hammer and sickle are brought down on Alexei. Uh -oh. Grigori shows up and shoots the defector in the Ooh. chest, sending the Russian scientist reeling and Murray stripping his clothes off to help his friend. Hopper sees the danger and lures the Russians into a funhouse, where there's hopefully not a Frankenstein getting a hand job from a psychic. Damn, sure. a three-story funhouse? I bet those carnies could afford that fun mortgage with nothing more than a fun summer job, too. The funhouse does, in fact, beget a fun fight scene, but I'm hesitant mm. to say Jim kills this Russian rando, so I'm not gonna put him on the count. Same goes for Grigori, who gets tricked by mirrors and shot a whole bunch of times in the chest. You'd think that would be a kill, but nope, he's actually just living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. Or er, wait, no, he's wearing a bulletproof vest. But don't worry, really? I've asked Alexi to set a reminder to add him to the count, since he's bled out and died by time Joyce and Murray returned to him. Hope that corn dog was worth it, Merster. They leave and pick up Hopper on their way out, telling him he's now the only Alexi in their group. At least they've got one of the Russian walkies now, though. And that's how they learn their kids are being hunted at the mall. The armed Russian guards are closing in on the Scoopy gang when they're intercepted, not by Hopper, but by the series' resident superhero. Eleven chucks a car full speed Ooh. at the guards and kills all four of them with ease. The underage cast members reunite and catch each other up on everything just in time for the season finale. Unfortunately, their main power player's not in the best of uh -oh. shape thanks to whatever creepy crawler is slinking beneath her skin. Oh, shit. Yep, Elle's got a bad case of subdermal wormholes. You know, gut graboids. She got them by the tentacles biting at her in Hopper's cabin. You can't get those things out with chopsticks, Jonathan, but a burning blade? Well, now we're talking flame heart. Johnny on the spot cuts into Eleven's leg, but ultimately, she spends all of her powers performing her own upside-down ectomy. Ooh. This was another one of Rodeo's VFX. Woo! I'll always prefer a practical cool effect, effects, though. I'd be lying if I said I even noticed this was digital. That the sluggy boy lands wow. on the floor and underneath the boot of one Jim Hopper. Daddy's home. Okay, everyone's finally together cool, and on the same page. They recap. <laughs> Loop Monster is the Mind Flayer's weapon, but if they close the gate, it should sever the connection and de -gloop Hawkins for good. Mm -hmm. Murray's got maps from Alexi, but Erica cuts a mean promo on him and says he don't know shit about the tunnels like mm. she does. Why is this four-year-old speaking to me? Um, I'm ten, you bald bastard. Oh! Twelve-year-old Priya Ferguson, a lot to do. This was that lot, a lot of folks said she was not to play with on this season. I see what I'm talking about. Season, and I think she handles it perfectly. This is her breakout the only thing season. Better than her dressing down this dressed-down man is four bros hugging it out after having separate adventures. That's that fellowship-ish. A plan is made. The adults will head to Red Base, guided by Dustin and Erica on a radio. They'll need higher elevation to broadcast, so it's off to the Susie speaking spot and the Todd Father. The car gives its all father and makes it pretty high, but its psycho magnotheric slime runs out of positive reinforcement and they have to climb the rest of the way on foot. The parents say goodbye to their children with many a sad look and strong hug, and Hopper even wishes Mike well. Aw, that's nice. The kids go off and the adults head down, Murray still in his tank top, which is so hilarious to me. At the bottom of the elevator, they run into a problem, and when this rocket horse can't talk him out of it, Hopper opens fire. He guns down oh! the guys who were okay. honestly just there okay, doing their job. I bet they went to elevator trade school and everything. This is okay, a Rambo? bit of a jump in action for me, and I like that Murray is at least bugged by it. I love that he's the kind of guy who can find genuine enjoyment talking to a Russian guard. Why are you talking so much? He was nice. He was nice? He was a nice guard. Yeah, I mean, we should probably invite him over after all this is done. Nancy and her crew go to leave for a safer location, mm -hmm. only to find that the station wagon is no longer operational. Mm. A cable's been cut. <gasps> and it was upside down Billy, the saboteur! Uh -oh. That puts them back inside the mall with Nancy arming herself in case of Billy. Sorry, Max. To fix the station wagon, they turn to the car Elle previously used as a bowling ball. But her self-surgery took all her powers away, so they have to get things going the manual way. I told you. Physics. Yes, yeah, science! Oh, yeah. Science doesn't let you down like magic powers can. Sorry, Elle. Looks like you're not the same can crusher you used to be. Before Jonathan can fix the car so they can go on and get, the group gets split by a goop. Our drippy monster friend is back, mm. and he's bigger and better than ever. Lord. The disguised adults reach the vent, and Murray climbs inside so Hop and Joyce can turn off the laser and close the gate. In the meantime, they're left stewing in their feelings, and Joyce recommits to a dinner date with the big man. Just maybe don't drink as much this time, huh, Hop? Murray is left through the air ducts by Scoop Troop, whose hillside vantage point gives them a good look at the mall. What they see ain't pretty, because there's a monster over there. Scoop Troop to Gloop Goop, do you copy? Gloopsters over and out. With that thing looking for some kids to kill, or really anyone to kill who's not a mannequin or already dead, Steve the Hero Harrington takes off to help the mall group. Robin, you can come too. Murray reaches his destination and starts yanking cables like he's hunting for an ethernet cord in an old box. Why do I still have VGA cables? Shit breaks down in the burgeoning lovebird 
experts are almost able to get to the Russian laser opening the gate. But the code to the door is Planck's constant, a scientific number that Murray can't remember. Luckily, Dustin knows the perfect nerd girl who can give them the digits they need. He radios over to a village in Salt Lake City, and his summer camp girlfriend Susie oh. answers the call. Lucas's seasonal slingshotting skills allows the two groups of kids to get away from the beast. Nancy, Lucas, and the Byers boys escape outside, where the elder Byers tries to get the car going. Billy starts hurtling towards them, and despite her best shots, Nance is unable to stop him. Fortunately, Steve Harrington T-bones the Billster, mm. saving the day and causing at least two concussions in the process. This car crash stunt was practical, mm. holy fucking shit, and overseen by stunt coordinator Hiro Koda, who also co-choreographs the fights in Cobra Kai with his wife Janelle Kerfman. Hey. They had five cameras running on the crash to make sure they got it on video, and thankfully, everything went off without a hitch. The car speeds away from the giant gloop monster as the people inside listen to Dustin talk with Susie on the radio. He asks her for Plank's constant, but she's upset that he's only calling for a favor. In return for the numbers, she wants him to sing a song, and the result is a segment I gather is a bit divisive. Four. Written on the pages Four. is the Oh my god. Oh god. Oh lord! Is it cringe? I mean, yeah, but the whole show is to some extent. I don't love it, but in time, I have come to kind of like it. It's a little cute, the reaction shots are funny, and guest star Gabriella Pizzolo really gives it her all. The almost never-ending song ends, and she gives them one grain of sand in the form of the constant. Hopper blip bloops the door open, and it's off to shut down the gate for good. Okay, thanks Susie, bye! A badly damaged Billy climbs mm. out of his car just in time to see Mike, Ellen, Max. That causes is the L Hunter Gloop 1000 to turn around and head back towards its main target. When Billy reaches the kids, Max tries to reach her brother, but it doesn't even start to deter him. He's mm. here for one kid and one kid only. He carries Eleven back out into the mall courtyard and lays her down at the altar of Gloop. All praise the Gloop God, for he is many and he is one. Lucas and the others show up, and they all start tossing Fire big cracker, fireworks, fireworks the we go. I can only imagine how long Woo! it took for them to render all these incredible visual effects. This mm. is the so-called spider monster, a gloopy version of the Mind Flayer itself. <sighs> While season two's dart was sometimes played by a marble, and the hospital monster was played by everyone's new favorite guy, mm. the final 22 feet tall spider monster was played by a beach ball on a 30 wow. foot pole. That could make acting difficult, so on-set music was sometimes used to help Set the mood. Oh, okay. Sometimes it'll just be like Jurassic Park. Last time I'll shout out rodeo effects, but they do deserve all the flowers. Mm -hmm. These goop effects they are do, top they notch. Some good job As in, lights uh, and colors but... explode all around they them, Eleven good. taps into Billy's inner uh, humanity by mentioning his memories, specifically the beach one with his pretty mama. I guess mm -hmm. there's still some Billy underneath all those HGH veins. Joyce and Hopper get to the main science room underground, and Hop politely encourages everyone Woo! to take a 15 minute break. They see get the, the laser birthing a canal to the upside so. down and stick the two keys in to turn it off together. Before they can, Grigori shows up, because he's this mm. season's boring big bad. He and Hopper get into another fight scene, which spills out towards the upside down door knocking machine. Grigori nearly takes Hopper's head mm. off with the centrifuge, but eventually Hopper gets the upper hand and says, Hasta la vista, up, Grigori. Baby. He tosses the Russian henchman into the upside down machine, ridden its worst villain since Carol and Tommy H. With time running out for everyone who's fighting the Mind Flayer's weapon upstairs, Joyce figures out a way to turn two keys at the same time. Mm. Thought you had to be a millionaire to swing that. Meanwhile, Mike and Max wake up, and she gets to the courtyard just in time to see her brother, I guess, sacrifice himself to save Eleven from the spider monster. Although he was the one who dragged her over there in the first place. You know, this almost looks like the dream of the fisherman's wife. Less erotic and more lethal, though. Sorry, Billy. Oh, wait, no I'm not. With Russians among us and among Joyce and Hopper, she has to blow up the machine, even though Hopper's standing next to it. Damn, she'd really do anything to avoid going on that date with him, huh? With a couple of nods of recognition and a bittersweet smile from Jim, Joyce pulls the trigger and blows up the machine, disintegrating the five Russians who are approaching mm. it, but not killing Hopper, as the season four trailers made abundantly clear right from the get-go. Wow. Helps my job, but still, trust your audience. Let them have a little surprise, you know, as a treat. The gate closes and Joyce doesn't see Hopper in sight, but at least the spider monster is down. It doesn't go on the count, of course, because it's not humanoid, but Billy is humanoid, so we get to count him as he dies on the floor. Yep, 
I, I don't really feel anything right now. Max does though, and she oh. will. Joyce and Murray escape the Russian base and the US feds come to town, led by none other than Dr. Owens. Maybe get an orange Julius while you're in there, doc. They find the Russian base empty and the upside down hole still scabbing, but all in all, mostly a happy ending, right? I mean, except for Hopper. Sorry, Al, Police Chief Papa oh. ain't there no more. Three months later, we get a 20 minute denouement. It kicks off with a Hawkins news report, fresh out of VHS 85. It mentions Bob, Barb, and uh, Toxie, as well as the satanic panic stuff that factors hugely into season four. The report closes with a satisfying shot of Mayor and Tights going to jail. Joyce is packing it up and moving the buyers out of Hawkins, meaning the boy gang is about to be split up. They won't have oh, Will the Wise the to DM it. That and also means Jonathan and has to the move crime away from the, Nancy, that's, that's and the I'm surprised crime, by uh, how much the, their goodbye uh, scene affects from? me. Probably owes a lot to the chemistry these real life partners have. Eleven's gonna be going with the buyers as well, which means her and Mike are about mm -hmm. to be as separated as she is from her powers. Oh yeah, I said it, Al. You lost your powers. Before they leave, they finally say they love each other, oh. which is basically getting married when you're a kid that age. The episode's emotional climax happens as Eleven reads the speech Hopper had written to say to her and Mike. David Harbour's VO is sweet and warm, especially backed by a score that could be on Spotify's Music to Write By playlist. This is the benefit of TV series storytelling. These emotional good Oh, yeah, have a lot of said, weight the, to them. You really to feel the sadness, cry, even cry, when they're yeah. using the same exact shot that they did in season two. Mm -hmm. eh, maybe it's a callback. I do think the emotion's Aww. a little undercut by this second ending they tack on with heroes playing. It's a weird editing decision to see all this stuff a second time. A mid credit scene takes place in Russia at what could be the Seventh Circle Prison. The guards mention an American prisoner, then toss a Russian guy into a cage with a monster. It's the Demogorgon, who we haven't seen since season frickin' one. Is it the same one? I don't know, but I'll count the Russian prisoner it eats as our final victim of this count. Will season three's wow. body count match this episode's monster length? Let's find out and get to the numbers. Oh shit, what'd I win? Oh, oh plush little Demogorgon. Oh. It's so cute and teethy. By my count, Stranger Things 3 had 58 kills in total. That's more than three and a half times the 16 kills in season one, and it beats season two's count by eight, making season three the most lethal season of the show I've counted so far. Gender breakdown's hard to do because of masks and shadows, so how about some other fun facts? The Mind Flayer was responsible for 33 of the victims. Grigori only nabbed himself two, while Eleven killed four guys and Hopper killed five. And with eight episodes this season, that left us with an average of 7.25 kills per episode. Chainsaw, I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to the Great Big Glob of Gloop in the basement the of the Old Steel Mill. The effects are fantastic. They made all the people falling apart look horrific. Doll Machete for Lamas Kill will go to the Russian scientist who was bored to death by Grigori. Same. And that's it. Stranger Things Season 3 came out in 2019. COVID delayed season four, so there was a three year gap before we finally got it. As this kill count comes out, the first chunk of episodes have already been released. And honestly, season four fucking rules. Go check it out for yourself. Yeah, well, Until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Or the next kill count. On Halloween night in 2018, Michael Myers returned to- Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, this is um Halloween. This is, um, is this the first, this is the, this ends, whatever, hold on. Yeah, I think it's Halloween ends. Yeah, well, I'm gonna hold up on that because I will eventually do this once I get through the Halloweens. Uh, do get through do the uh, Halloweens. Uh, once Halloween gets selected as a series, though. But in that, do you have a Stranger Things? Um, we're in that too. So for now, I'll put something in place of that week as well too. To whether it is um, I might do another franchise week for like the the goats or like Halloween Nightmare on Street or any other, or I will uh, just make it an extra day for like newer kill counts as well too. To who knows? But then that before we go further, we're going to the. Uh, the the loser poll I pulled out as well too as recently well, you know um as I got five MC joiners as well too the redemption poll and that is the one that's stuck in the uh, gulags blood bottom tourist trap malignant Pony pool and the news entry collector and with the grit with the total of forty four percent surprisingly the one that been stuck in the gulags for many a times. Blood Quantum is the one that survives survive first and will be on the next poll week as well, too, um, paired with the last week's runner-up. Would happen to be, if I can remember, 
deep rising as well too. With nineteen, with nineteen percent Taurus traps returns, will will is out the Gulas is Taurus trap, malignant and Pony pool, and surprisingly, collector will be stuck in the Gulas. So collector, along with its sequel, um, the collection will be stuck in the Gulas to further notice. But other than that, trade thing enjoy there as well too. So if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T Press signing off. One love.